Okay, you're in Microsoft Excel and you want to perform an if based on color. And in this scenario, what we're going to do is color certain product names, which will result in a 15% discount when we calculate the discount price. Now I'm going to show you two methods of achieving this. The first is with a VBA function and the second is with the get.sale function. Now let's start with the VBA function. Your first step is to right click on your sheet tab and then go to view code. That'll open the Visual Basic Editor. Now you need to create a module. To do that, go to Insert and then Module. You can see your module there. And then you need to write this code. Now I'm actually gonna paste it in just to save writing it out. So we're creating a function called get cell color has one argument called range. So that's the cell reference that we're going to provide to extract the color from. And what the function does is return the color index number of that cell. Now to get this function to automatically update, when we change the color of cells, we're going to add another little bit of code to the sheet in which we're going to run this function. So the sheet I'm going to run this function in is the VBA sheet. So I'm going to double click on that. Within the code window, I need to change this drop down to worksheet. And I'm going to keep selection change in this drop down. So selection change is seen as an event in Excel. And whenever a different cell is selected, I want to refresh the Excel application. And to do that, I'm going to use this code. And essentially what I'm doing is forcing a full calculation within Excel, but I only want to do it if there is a selection change within this range. I don't want to recalculate otherwise. So I'll leave those two bits of code in the description of this video. We can then close down the Visual Basic Editor. And first of all, we're just going to use this new function that we've created. So we called it get cell color. And you can see it in the IntelliSense list there. And all I need to do is provide a cell reference. So let's say that's A5. Close the bracket. And at the moment, what it's doing is returning minus 4,142. But if I change that cell color to red, and then click outside that cell, you can see it returns the number three. So that's the index number for the red background. Now, if I copy this formula down and I do it for other cells, you can see initially it doesn't change the number. I have to click into another cell for it to recalculate. Now, if I do another one here, but I click outside column A, you see it doesn't recalculate. And that's because of this code here. We are not going to recalculate unless a selection change occurs within this range. Now you could get rid of the if statement here and just leave that code, but that will mean that it will recalculate whenever you make a selection change, wherever you are within the sheet, which you probably don't want. Could slow down the spreadsheet. If I undo this, I need to make a color change and then click somewhere in column A within that range in column A. So now I've got the index number for the cell that I'm referring to. I can write my if statement. I can say if the cell color is equal to three, so if it's red, then I want to apply a 15% discount. So I take the price and multiply it by open brackets, one minus the discount, which I'd lock with F4 on my keyboard. Otherwise, I want to return the original price. I can apply a bit of currency format here. And again, if I change the color of the product description cell to red, click into another cell within that range, it automatically recalculates the discount price for me. Okay, so that's the first method. Let's look at the second method. Now to use this method, make sure you've clicked into the first cell that you need your if statement in, and then go to the formulas tab and go to name manager. Click on new and give this 
function that we're going to create a name. So I'll call this cell color. And then down here in the refers to box, you need to write equals get dot cell open bracket. And then you type 38. Now get dot cell can retrieve lots of information about a cell. And the first argument within this get dot cell function requires you to put in a number and 38 is the number that retrieves the background color of the cell. That's what the 38 is, comma. Then you need to supply a cell reference. So the cell reference for the formula in this cell, C5, would be A5. That's the cell I'm going to change the color of. Now I do need to take those dollars out and you can do that manually or you can press F4 on your keyboard to get rid of the dollars. Then you close the bracket and you click on OK. Click on close here. So what you then do is make sure you're still in that cell that you were in when you were creating this cell color function and then type equals cell color and you'll see that function in the IntelliSense list. Press enter and it will return a number that corresponds to the color of that cell. Now, if I change that cell to red, I'll have to double click to refresh it. You can see it returns a three. Now, the fact that I have to double click into it will get over in a minute, but you can see it's essentially worked. So if I copy this formula down and again, change something to red, double click into the cell, press enter, it's returning a three. Now to get the formula to automatically update, we can use the same trick as before, as we used with the VBA method. So if I go back into the code for that sheet and I copy this code that was in sheet one, and I'm gonna paste it into sheet two and then close down the Visual Basic Editor. So now if I change the color of a cell, click somewhere else in that column, you can see that it automatically updates the number. So now I can write my if statement. So if the cell color equals three, then what I want to do is multiply the price by one minus the discount, which I need to lock otherwise return the original price. So if I copy that down, apply some accounting format, and then if I change, say, the color of this cell to red, click down in the cell beneath, you can see it recalculates the price. Now with both of these methods, when you come to save the file, you must save it as a macro enabled workbook Otherwise, the functionality that we've just explored will not work. Okay, that's all I wanted to cover in this particular video. Hopefully that's useful. If it is, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe, and I'll see you next video.